All right, God bless you guys for joining here at HNLC International here in the city of Plano, Texas. We're going to get started. We got an 18 view, uh, 815 um, uh, time limit here. But, you know, most of you know, I usually kind of get going, you know, just a few minutes after, you know, because I'm constantly concentrating myself in the Lord and hearing what He has to say before I bring this word forth. You know, we talk about being on time, you know, force to try to please the people, but the word of God is always to the point He wants you to say it the way He wants you to say it in the way He wants to say it. You know, what God also decrees according to Romans 10 and 17, you know, the ears are only to the part of the one who have an ear to hear. Let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. You hear it in the LC studios, we speak from the Spirit. You know, it's not an educational word. It's not to the point to make you feel good in such a way to make you feel an enthusiast. I mean, be excited about the Lord, true enough, but we want to let you guys know that the word we bring it forth to you is coming from the kingdom. We, we have to make ourselves conduits. You know, the word of God say he'd be giving us the power, supremacy, and authority to come down on earth, to rule, reign, convict, and rest. According to Romans 4, 17, call things in events of circumstances in the lives of people, not only your own, that be not the what the word. And knowing that what God declares the word, he said that everything that proceeded out of his mouth is a forty word. He said it won't go void, but it's got the power to accomplish all that nary. In other words, you got to be able to call things that be not what they were. We're going to get moving here. We're going to let the music kind of solidify itself, as I said before. I don't want to sound redundant. We're going to get started over here in the book of Proverbs, you know, chapter 14. And we're going to kind of concentrate ourselves on that uh, 12th and 13th verse as we move forward here tonight. It's a pleasure for you guys to join us. Give me a few minutes. We're going to let the music just move here a while. We're going to come back. We're going to open up with prayer. And we're going to hear just what the Lord has to say on tonight here at HNLC Studios. Plano, Texas. of your word, a priest in the kingdom, you know, coming from the kingdom to bring down the word to the, to the earth, you know, the word declares that our Father who art in heaven, how I be thy name, thy kingdom come. Father God, make me the conduit. I'm actually touch the mouth of this priest as he go forth, and let me declare that what you have given me to declare, nothing of myself, but everything I speak because of you, Father God. And through the precious power of your Holy Spirit, Father God, let the ears of the listeners be illuminated. And let them not lean to the education or understanding, but let them hear what the Spirit has to say concerning the words that you have to speak to your priests on tonight. Father God, I declare the word. I decree it. I speak it and put it in position, not of myself, but through the authority of the Most High God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It's a decreed word. It's a declared word. It's already been going forth according to the kingdom of God. And these things I don't speak of myself, but of the power of the Most High God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray, Lord, amen. I want to give a shout out to uh, my good newfound friend. Uh, it's part of the uh, particular social network. And I believe I got that right, Elaine Singer and her and her husband, Charles Singer. Of course, November the 10th, they'll be out at Texas Speedway giving that information about, um, giving the message about the marriage conference to those of you want to know about uh, more about uh, Sister Singer, Elaine Singer, and her husband, Charles Singer. Hope I got that right, Elaine. I want to pull anything out of place but once you go to your actually facebook channels and go to event and look under the message conference it is a vip event check it out see what's going on hear what the word of god has to say that's coming from the kingdom of god this is very important because what they're preaching is what god's covenant you know when god brings us together in holy matrimony and the word of mind begins to declare by the power of god invested in that priest or that prophet who he has called to bring the man and woman together you're bonded you know, whatever it hurts becomes yours and whatever yours become his. And number one, you're, you're part of the kingdom of God as you move forth and hear what the word of God has to say. Through all the peaks and all the valleys, all the ups and downs, she declared the word. And one of her actually sites, you got to learn how to finish strong because we know this is what the enemy is after, the covenants. 
Do you want to break the covenant to destroy the fact that what God has declared in the marriage as we come forth to multiply and bring forth the children? We ought to raise them up with both parents in the household, just by the difference between you and the other. You got to come together. You got to be as one. You got to finish the race. Once you get on the track and you've been in the mitt and it come out of your mouth, marriage, you never want to let the D word fly out. And if it so happened to fly out, you want to be quick to repent because God has given you the ability to bring that holy matrimony together that you may be under the, <clears throat> the the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit, which he has governed you to be in the kingdom of God, which is here on earth. The Bible said you are in the kingdom because you got the power, which is over the prince of the air. If you read Ephesians 1 and 21, he said, far above all princes and power in dominion, not only in this name, but everything which is to come. God has given you the ability in Romans 4 and 17. You are in the position to call things that be not if they were and also want to tell you about the man of God is going to be coming up on here uh, November the 14th 5 and 6 it's coming out of Philippine station and it's going to be over at 100.7 it's going to be PHT time now don't get me to telling you anything about a PHT time but I want to make sure you look it up on your local, uh, your local listing or you know, whatever is on your Facebook channels find out what PH time is but it's going to be um, Dr. Von Peet, Dr. Terry, um, uh, Apostle uh, Terry, um, I mean, excuse me, get the right, Apostle uh, Dr. Von Peet. Want to make sure I get that right. It's a newfound friend, a good father, good mentor. Maybe that's one of the things you got to mentor me on. Look, when you talk about somebody, get it right. Dr. Von Peaks and Terry Von Peaks, you know, senior pastors out at GNIC, Good News International Ministries out there in the city of Arlington, Texas. 1919, Collins Street. For more information about that ministry, you want to give them a call. It's going to be 817. 817- 380-5406 but don't forget about Erlene Singer and her husband Charles Singer and it's going to be out the November 10th at the Texas Motor Speedway for more information about the work they're doing in the kingdom of God you want to go to the message conference and that's going to be on your Facebook channels or whatever you have under events and you want to get out there and hear what they got to say. It's exciting words in the season that we're in. We're going to make sure we're going to be finishing strong in everything we do, especially when we begin to open our mouth and then to declare the word according to the kingdom of God. Because, you know, most of us realize and understand we're living in the days where the truth to be called a lie. And the lie be called the truth. In other words, deception of the enemy to make you feel other than what God declared and called you to be. And this is one of the things we're dealing with over here in the book of Proverbs. You know, we talk about the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter um, 14. want to kind of, you know, go to a few different scriptures and uh, just talk about this, but give you some solid information and background in terms of what this word is really saying. Not going to a whole lot of historical part, but give you some of the layman's and understanding that you got to understand the basics. And we talk about the basics in the ministry. You know, we talk about the principles of the ministry before we actually get ourselves over in the book of Proverbs um, chapter three. We want to kind of push back here just a little bit, not for, you know, not for a period of time. And we're going to be talking about uh, the word about the principles of the kingdom. As you look at the word over in the book of Proverbs and the Holy Spirit dropped this on me. Over in the book of Proverbs, chapter four, I want to make sure I got that right. Chapter four in, uh, in that verse seven, and the word of God say wisdom is the principles. Now, we're going to have uh, uh, Dr. Albright on with us on tomorrow, speaking about this particular verse in general and how God really wants us to be able to reap the wisdom in terms of what's going on, that we will receive the benefits through the Holy Spirit under the commanding of this word. That when it comes to us, we know how to walk in it, how to deal with it, and how to handle it in such a way that we receive all the benefits that God has in store for us. Remember, he told us he came that we may have life and life more abundantly. But the word of God also tells us he don't want us to be ignorant of the devil devices. And the word of God speaks and tells us, you know, you got to be able to lean not to your own Proverbs 3 and 5. But you got to acknowledge God. I mean, you got to call out to God in the midst of the distressful things that you're going through. Knowing that the word of God will always go forth. He said, according to what is the numbers 23, 19 and 21, that he's not a God that he shall lie. He's not a son of any piece of a flush or any man that he should have to repent. When God gives a command it's to bless and he can and will not reverse it. He said he exalt what his word above his name. The only problem we got in the earth is men and man's problem is men. And I mean, both men and women. But we look at the book of Proverbs four before we go back over to Proverbs chapter 14. And we're going to look at just a, just a small smidgen of what Dr. Albright is going to be bringing to you on tomorrow here at HNLC Studios, HNLC Studios here in the city of Plano, Texas. And it looks over here and it says something very interesting. 
when we think about this word, he said, wisdom is the principles. Now think about the principles, you know, the principle is something that you real, you're, you're, you're understanding about, you know, the principles of this, you know, the principles of a marriage, you know, the principles of how to walk with Christ. If you don't know the principles, the word of God tells you, if any man lack the wisdom, according to the book of James, then ask, and God will give to you liberally. I mean, it's good to be among a pearl. According to the book of Galatians chapter four, he talks about, you got to stand under the leadership of the tutor at a certain time, then God will release you. Well, principles, when you're actually on a squad, basketball, football, or whatever it may be that organization had rules and regulations as you play on the field it's like a play call that's why we look at the bible as the b-i-b-l-e the body of instructions or the body of the bible of instructions before leaving earth that's a principle that's a way we have to walk the way god wants us to rock to see uh, to receive the full benefits of what god has in store for us notice what he's saying here wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom and with all thy getting Get understanding. Now, I don't want to stay on this, but I want to just picky boo if you give me a chance. And I want you to see something here as we look at this. It's a little bit closer in the area of the amplified version. It's called the A P. Uh, what well, that's the amplified classic edition, the AMPC. And he says something very strong in that particular verse in the amplified version in Proverbs uh, four and seven. He said the beginning of wisdom. Look what he says. The beginning of wisdom, I mean, the principles of wisdom, I mean, the rules and regulations, how you're supposed to operate. See, God, well, a lot of, I'm, I'm about to move somewhere and I don't want to go there. But see, God said, according to the word of God in Jeremiah 1 and 5, the Bible said you have been created and designed to be a priest here on earth. In other words, Jeremiah 1 and 5 said before you was born, created and designed and engineered, he called you to be a prophet before the nation. But whenever you come into something extraordinary, whenever you are actually a pro athlete, CEO, CFO, and you go to a new level and whatever you're going to, there's principles, there's understanding that you have to know about how to run that corporation business. And it's the same thing when I go back to the woman of God, Erling Singer. She talks about the principles of marriage. Her and Charles Singer, they're trying to get you the basis to understand to get the wisdom of what God said in the covenant in which you're in and what you're actually entered into. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, God said, according to the principles that you have learned, you know how to raise that banner. And you know, the devil will flee. The Bible say, uh, he say, resist the devil and he will flee. Look at this a little bit more in the Amplified Version as we kind of get ourselves. I want to pull out of this because I know the Holy Spirit gonna, is going to drag. And, I, you know, I want to keep things in line because of the young ministers, the people who are listening with a tentative ears tonight. He said, the beginning of wisdom in Amplified Version, AMPC, Classic Edition, uh, Proverbs 4 and 7. The beginning of wisdom is Get wisdom. Notice what he says is if you're going to learn wisdom, then you got to get wisdom. And he comes back and he puts a parenthesis. He kind of puts a, 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 semi, a, like a semicolon there and he puts a partner. He said skillful and godly wisdom. He said for skillful and godly wisdom is the principle. You know, it, it, it's principle. It's the principal thing. You know, you got to understand the principles of wisdom. Wisdom is you got to learn it skillfully. You got to learn it godly. And then you got to learn the thing which is called wisdom. And he goes on and said, he said, and with all that have gotten, that means when you got it, get understanding. Look, he said, how'd you get the understanding? Understanding, discernment, comprehension and interpretation. I better leave that alone and get back over here to the area of Proverbs 14 because I'm, well, I'm drifting way off course in terms of what the Holy Spirit is not. Now, it's in there. I'm telling you, it's in there. You know, I mean, I know somebody here because I'm reading. I'm, I'm actually moving fresh off the press on this because I wasn't even supposed to be over there. But when God calls you to do a work, you're not God about what you think from your education or what you pre-wrote the pre-script on the day before. Because when God gives you illumination, he gives you fresh information through the spirit. Then when you discern the word and you declare the word and you create, you begin to speak things and call things, not of yourself, that be not, that attest the mind and the heart, that illuminate that individual into a new plateau of information that comes from the kingdom of God. 
Education will never supersede revelation. Names, title, positions are never armor and move in the head of what the Holy Spirit has. Paul speaks about that in the book of 1 Corinthians in that second chapter. He said it has been written. Notice what he says that you know your eyes, the physical things or the actually uh, senses you have. They have not seen and they have not heard and it has neither has it entered into the heart of any man. Notice how he's saying the things that God what has prepared for them that what love him. When you love God, you obey his commandments, his statutes. I heard Dr. Dale Wilson speak about this all the time. And it's a relevant word for a relevant time. The Bible said we're living in a time now that the lie will become the truth and the truth will become a lie. All talk or performance with no display of the demonstration of the power of God will capture the minds and hearts of people in these days because they're more aware of the, what we call the action of all talk performance, whether than the revelation of the illumination of the power of the spirit moving with demonstration. Jesus declared the word, you know, I wasn't worried about whether who you didn't like me or not. According to the book of John chapter 14, he said, you got to look here, believe it not that I am in the father and the father in me. If you don't believe me, then all I need you to do is sit back and watch my smoke because the father sent me to do the work and I am under his jurisdiction. I'm under his rulership. I'm under his governmental tutorship. And I come down to do the work of the one who sent me. If you don't believe me, according to what I'm telling you, then watch the work. Jesus wasn't concerned about drawing any kind of attention to himself. He was telling you, I come down here in a volume of administration through illumination to show you the power of demonstration in which I come. That according to the book of Hebrews, uh, come on somebody, I, I know I'm there. One in 12, I am the author and the finisher of your faith. I came to demand a word according to the kingdom of God to let you know that these things are possible because I'm a tool to you and show you how it's supposed to be done. But when I leave here, I'm going to leave you a comforter. I'm going to leave you a, I'm going to leave you a paraclete that's going to lead you into all of you and whatever shadows or whatever valley of death you may be going through. All you got to do is call on Abba because according to the Holy Ghost, the Bible tells me that he's present wherever you may lift up your voice and call on the name of the Lord. He said, whoever calls on him. He's not only that nano God, but he's a right now God. That, that, that's, that's a word. And what he says, that was it Proverbs with the Psalms of 43. That I'm a very present help. Uh, he didn't say tomorrow, yesterday, I'm a very present help to him that believe, according to Mark 9 23. I'm a very present help at a very present time of need. But Mark 9 and 23 said, You got to believe it. Oh Lord, you you I don't I don't somewhere, I don't know it, it, it but 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 these words in which we speak are spirit and in truth. That God declares and decrees that even when he brought his son to bring forth the illumination in the earth, we have begun the ability as being kings and princes here on earth. They obtain that what he's left for us to be able to move, rule and reign and call things. I like the way Dr. J.C. Matthews said that you have been given supremacy, authority, power, rulership over here on earth. But you got to believe it. The Bible says if you got to him that believe it's an individual uh, case to do. You got to have your own. You got to work out your own soul and salvation. You got to be able to understand that you're called to be an example to the weak here on earth. That now when you display the performance and the power of God, you will mesmerize them. And the Bible said they will be more to look into what the angel is doing through you and send it back to God to give you the principles of the power of the spirit to know that you got the ability to move in every area of life with no doubt. I mean, you will move a world class speed, supernatural speed because you believe in God and his son who came down here to deliver you according to the book of Hebrews 12 to show you how the works is supposed to be done. He came to mimic his father and he said, if you don't believe me, then watch the work, watch the woman with the issue of blood. Watch the look, look, watch blind Barnabas and Bates, not on the educational level. Look what happened with Jairus. Look, 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 look at the synagogue leader, Jairus' daughter. Look at Peter's mother. Look at blind Barnum and Bayless. Look at the ten lepers. Am I there with somebody? I'm trying to get you to see that when God began to illuminate in your life, the Bible says your mouth will wrap it off like an AK-47 because now the power of God is demonstrating itself through you that now you're calling things, you're prophesying and speaking and calling events in lives of individuals that be not though if they were. I love the way Paul puts the word about the discerning of the spirit. 
when he goes into the very uh the his very loop i say his very strength over there in the area of the book of first corinthians in that second chapter he talks about how he's been written that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard but see he takes it a little farther and he said these things can't be compared from a human expectation the ball the paul begins to speak over here excuse me man the woman of god paul begins to speak over here in this particular area of first corinthians in the tenth verse. he said god's got to reveal these things to us by the spirit me as a man of God, I can't see nothing until I get down on my knees. That's why we look at Abraham, the father of many nations. Now, Abraham wasn't counted for what were righteousness. He was counted for faith. Of course, we understand the process with Sarah and we look at Isaac and Ishmael and all that. Well, so we know he wasn't counted for righteousness, but he was counted for faith. Being that he was called the father of many nations. But Paul takes it a further vision to understand in the new covenant, everything that you do has got to be revealed through the spirit because now the holy ghost searches all things come on somebody the deepest things of god the bible says according to the man's theology man's education man's seminary he said man only knows the things of what he know but no man knows the things of the power and the presence of the illumination of the things that come from the third heaven i talk about how this word i know i know god moving in here because I'm going to get to what I got to get to. But I'm not going to be with you long. But I'm about to shake it. Because you're going to feel something in this mirror. Because I know God is moving in here. The word of God begins to declare. And he begins to decree as he speaks softly and strongly about his illumination. And Paul begins to speak about the spiritual understanding. He said, for what a man knows. Now this is in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. And at 11 verse. He said, for what a man knows the things of a man. Save the spirit which is in him. That man, that you know what that tells me? When you look at Romans 3, and back on that Romans 3, on that 3, that, 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 that 10 to 11, he said we were all shipwrecks. In other words, he said we were all messed up. We was all unprofitable. But I hear the word of God said through the ability to the power of his son, the shed of the blood for every mission, for every remission of every one of our sins. We as being man and women of God got the ability to speak and call things and be not though if they were known through God that everything and all things has already been made prop, uh, powerfully through the body of Christ. Now listen to what I'm saying when I said that. I kind of stumbled on that, but I don't regret the fact that I'm in there because I want you to see what I'm saying here. God is letting you know in the season that you're in, the dispensation that you're now in. God is pouring more power in the earth than ever before. He makes it available because the fight of the power between life and death and the spirit is getting strong. And God is pouring more power into the earth for those who have an ear to hear what the spirit has to say. Just because you walk in the names and titles and positions don't give you the authority to think that everything that you say is right. God said, I'm going to take something so foolish and I'm going to confound the wise and then the man of God. Because you know why? I'm getting you to know that the principles is what you got to understand. I need you to know the principles of the thing that how they declare on this earth that you have the ability to obtain all those things, not from a merit standpoint of view, but a spiritual pain point of view. Man wants things from his merit, his credentials, his style, his charisma, his clicks, his club, his title. But God said, I'm not moving in that area. I'm calling with a free spirit to he who has an ear. Let them hear what the spirit of the Lord has to say. Paul comes right back in that area of the first Corinthians and that second chapter and that 10th verse. He said, this thing has got to be revealed through the spirit. The spirit searches. Not to say some things, all things. In other words, everything you do, you got to filter it through the Holy Ghost. Lean not to your own. What is that, Proverbs 3 and 5? But you're going to have to understand that your acknowledgement has got to come through God. He's got the ability to give you all things and confirm all things through the Spirit. Now, you look at Proverbs chapter 14, because I, I, I mean, I, I don't want to push over my time. But this all comes into relevancy when, when the word of God tells you about how it comes into relevancy with the terms of revelation. He says over in Proverbs 14 and 12, he said, that is a way. And look what he says. That is a way that seems right. Now, here we goes again. When you look at what Paul says over in the book of first Corinthians in that particular second chapter in that 11th verse or the 10th and 11th verse, he says, you got to be revealed through the spirit. Before the man only knows the things of the man. Now you look over here, back over and you look at the Proverbs chapter 14. You look at this 12th verse. He said, there's a way that seems right through a man. 
The problem with man is man. Man believe that he knows things to the point that no man can understand. But God said, no, that's another level. And it's called the Holy Ghost. But it's got to be revealed through the spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yea, the deepest things of God. See, no man knows the things of the spirit because they got to be spiritually discerned. But he said the man's way, the married way, the gaining attention and, and gaining a crowd, which is called the majority. And they ain't even always right. But you got to know that when God gives you something, it's got to be spiritually discerned. And you will know by the manufacturing of the word because of displaying what God will show you. It'll come to full fruition. There's a way that seems right. Unto a human. And yeah. But the end thereof. The way is death. Now. Now. I want to move over here. Now. I'm going to stay right there. Then 12 for a while. So I'm going to come back to the 13th. Now look how he says it. In the amplified version. If you turn over to your Bibles. And you look over. And you got your concordance. Or whatever you have. With your iPads. Laptops. Phone. Or whatever. Look at Proverbs 14. And look at Proverbs 14 in the Amplified Classic MPC and look at the 14th verse down here at the 12th verse or at the 14th chapter in the 12th verse. He said, there's a way which seems right. There we go again. Man's understand to a man and it appears straight before him. See, man, see the things the way it, it, that see, you hear him say it all the time that that's that's God. No, 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 no. No, the word of God say, according to what is it, John 4, 24, you got to be able to look, look, you got to try the spirit. You, you got to understand that it is be of God. You know what I'm saying? If this thing be of God, that Paul spoke to the, to the man of God over in Acts chapter four, I checked chapter five, Gamaliel began to speak on behalf of Paul as being one of the Sanhedrin councilmen. He said, if this thing be of God, well, if this thing be a man, it'll fail. But if it be of God. You will find yourself fighting against God himself and you cannot win because God said everything that he has revealed has got to be a illumination through fruition. It's got to see. He said, my word won't go void. It, it can't go back because I exalt my word above my name. But when you look at the word over here in the amplified version, in that area of the 14th uh, chapter in the 12th verse, he said, that is a way which seems right to a man. We talk about women and also. But it appears straight before him. But the end of it is the way of death. Now that ties in with the book of Proverbs 3 and 5. Lean not to your own, but to acknowledge God, look here, in all his ways. And he will in due season exalt you in the way in which you go. See, you can't lean to what you feel. You got to hear what the Holy Spirit was saying. So that's why when you get down on your knees and begin to pray to God, and as you pray to God, you begin to worship. And as you're worshiping to God, that brings in the angels. And when the angels come in and then you begin to pray, that when you pray now, God comes in and he and what the angels are sending back to him. And then your prayers become fervent prayers. You become righteous in the eyesight of God that when God begins to speak through the angels or hear through the angels and hear your voice, they're communicating back with God because now your heart is on the line. And now God is listening very attentively to how you are praying and speaking to him. He goes over here and he makes another kind of uh, a point here in the area of Proverbs 14 in the NIV in the national version. Now, in the national version, it says it like this when you look at the area in the 12th verse. There's a way that appears to be right. That means that, that that's a person who's not seeing clearly. He's seeing it from a natural standpoint of view. You know, his, his, his vision is impaired because he's looking at things from what we call a natural standpoint of view. He's looking at things from what we call, uh, 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 um, how would you say it? I, I want to use the right word in here, but he's looking at things from a physicality point of view. You know, he's looking at things in terms of a traditional way. This is the way it should be. This is the way everybody else do it. But how many people know when God gives you a vision, it's going to be something totally opposite of what men think it is. That's why he said it appears to be right. But in the end, it leads to death. Now, I'm going to move on to the 13 in this particular area of the NIV version. He said, even in laughter, look at it, heart, my aches and rejoicing may end in grief. That means, look here, you, you, you laughing. 
But that, but that's but your laugh assumed turned to tears. See, it, 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 you thought it was right. The Bible says, you know, the word of God say, he who laughs, who he laughs first, laughs last. Or who he laughs last, laughs first. Or no, I think it's he who laughs or who you laughs first, laughs, laughs last. Or it, 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 I, I know it's in there how he said that, that when it's like the latter rain is greater than the first. That when you begin to smile at things and you look at the sadness of an individual who seems like they're not moving as quick as they should move like over in the book of Luke chapter uh, six. And he talks about the building of the house on sand and the one who's actually like the pastor or the apostle in transition. He's digging and he's digging and the man he's building his house so fast and so quick. And it looks good from a physical standpoint of view, but now it's coming to a point that now the storms are going to come. You know, and then they say they beat vehemently the ways, the issues of life, the orange cones, the ditches, all the obstacles. Psalms 23, the valleys of the shadows of death, all the ups and downs, the peaks. You can't stand it because it looked good at first and everybody said, wow. But now the test comes and you're going to find out if it really be of God. And that's why you look at the book of Acts chapter 5 and to that 38, I think it's around that 35 to 38, uh, 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 Paul begins to, to hear the word to come from Gamaya, you know, the, the head of the Sanhedrin council. And he began to speak a word that said, some man by the name of Thaddeus who rose up some time ago, you came against him and you destroyed these men. But I'm telling you, stray away from these men, he said. And he said, leave these men alone. Because if this thing be of man, he said, it's going to fall. But if it be of God, you'll find yourself fighting against God and there's no way you will win. God has never lost the battle. Man is always a prize things from a physical, from what we call a merit standpoint of view. They want to look good. But God said that way seems right in the eyesight of the physicality of people, of the majority. Even we look at Saul and the position he was in as being a man that's called to be able to denounce, not so much denounce the word of Samuel, but go in favor of what the people wanted. And the word of God said, give them what they want. You know, hearken them to them, give them what they want. And he began to give them what they want. A man who looked like he had masculine entity, a man that had all the superiority of the physical standpoint of view, but he had a mental disability. To the point that he couldn't obey the first commandment. And he went down there and disobeyed the mouth of the prophet. And then the prophet came back and ruled over him. And even though he still looked like a king because of his disobedience, God had now stripped him. And when God stripped the kingdom from him, the Bible declares that Saul still looked like a king. But he was actually spiritually denounced. But he went right over there and saw a man that even looked like a king by the name of David flocking the sheep. Am I, I know I'm somewhere. Because see, 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 this is what I'm getting to get you to understand. When people look at you as if you ain't got what it takes. And that their notoriety ain't what they think it should be from a physicality point of view. See, that, were, that way looks right to an individual. But in the eyes of God, I said, now that, that what you seem to be right, that's wrong. Because you want it from a physical standpoint of view. But God said, what seems to be right in the eyesight of man is a lie. But I'm telling you, what I'm about to give you is right. Because what man called it now right is physically look good. And God calling it wrong. And what looks wrong in the eyesight of man, God is calling it right. David didn't even look like a king. Didn't even have the, the, the ability, the attributes of a king. But let me tell you something, man and woman God. God told that prophet to get the flask of oil and begin to anoint him and illuminate him for the work that he had for him because he's going to be the next king of Israel. And when Saul was still looking like a king, God had already denounced him spiritually. But David looked like a man that's begging on the corner and God raised him up spiritually. When you look at an individual and you think he looked like what he's supposed to be. No, don't get it twisted like Twizzlers. God's plan is so many, so different. See, that's why he talks about it in the book of Isaiah. I love it when he talks in the book of Isaiah. He said, for my thoughts in your thoughts, my ways in your ways, as far as from the heavens for the earth. Matter of fact, when you look at Isaiah 54, around that 54 and that, 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 that 55 and that 8, 9, and 10, he takes it and he makes it very clear to him that in my thoughts, your thoughts, my ways, your ways, 
And he begins to speak the word of God in Isaiah 55 and 11. And he talks about the process that how when he speak a word, it's a forwarding word. And the word goes forth and the word not should not come back void. But he makes it very clear that even when the enemy try to come against you in the book of Isaiah 54 and 17, he said there's no weapon. The Bible tells according to Psalms 91, you under the shadows of the almighty. It's a way that looks right in the eyesight of a man. But I'm telling you, man, the woman of God, when you begin to have the discerning spirit and man begin to look at you as if you don't have what it take and they begin to belittle you and look over you as if you ain't there. God begin to look at you, say, look, here, they're hitting the baton like a like a track runner running a race. You know, like when they hand it off, when they hit that curve and they begin to lean in that curve, somehow they get a burst of speed in that curve. See, God calls some of us to be curve runners. Some straight runners that when they get out, they look like they're leaving you. But it's, it, it, see, when I ran track, it's, 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 it's something in the curve. It's something about the force of gravity and the push in the curve that thrusts you out above the opponent in the last minute to when you come to a successful win, just when you're running even. You don't want to run neck to neck with Christ. And especially when you're walking for the devil, you're going to lose. It looked like he running neck to neck with you, but God said, hold on to my unchanging hand because I'm going to change his hand. It, it shifts me here when I think about this and how it's the way that seems right to a man, uh, but, but the end of his death, you know, God begins to declare how he speaks so, so candidly and so uh, vividly. This is the scriptures my mother taught me when I was a young boy and not even knowing much about ministry at all, but watching her has been a powerful prophet under the church of God in Christ and a powerful prayer and how she would usher the angels in around us to keep us safe in the midst, 13 of us and never lost one. And all of us were successful in the ministries, not in terms of bit behind pulpit, but our minds was laid in Christ and we knew how to pray. See, most people look at because you ain't behind that, that, that brick, that, that, that little pedestal up there. They, they feel like you ain't, you ain't, that ain't it. And when you ain't got thousands cheering you on, you ain't standing before great monuments and structures of people. They, they look at you if you, 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 ain't, you ain't got what it takes. But don't be fooled, my friend, because now God begins to speak a word in your life that how the enemy begins to come against you and how God begins to protect you. Even in the midst of Psalms 91, he said, you in a dwelling place, the secret place of the most high. See, when you in the secret place of the most high, God reveals things to you. It was that Deuteronomy 29 and 29. When, when, when Christ began to speak, when the, well, when the apostles began to speak to Christ about why do you speak in parables? The word of God declared according to the kingdom. He said, it's for you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. The Bible says when you in the secret place, there's things that have been revealed to you. There's illumination. There's dreams. There's transformation. There's things God is showing you with visionary excitement and structure and leading you in the right path. He'll show you things that no man has never known. Am I in there? First Corinthians. Did he say it? It didn't matter. His eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. There's things that God will show you that either, look a man. Look, you can write all the you can write all the books you want. But that's something that God will give you that ain't even in the book or the mind of a man. It ain't even entered into his heart as of yet. But the word of God said, when you under the shadows of the almighty and you abide under the wings of the almighty, I mean the shelters, and you're just hidden under him. God will begin to reveal to you. You rest like John did. He, he rest. The Bible said he rest. He laid on Jesus's breast. He, he wanted to lay, he wanted to hear everything that Christ had to say because he had insights about what he really came here to do as being the Messiah. The word of God goes on the Psalms 91. He said, I will say of the Lord. You, you see, you got to look at that. I will say of the Lord. That means you under total submission under the authority of the secret place. Now you begin to come into Romans 10 and 17. Your ears are attentively to hear what the Holy Spirit has to say. That, that, that you're in the refuge, uh, you know, in the fortress, 
My God in whom will I trust? Surely he will deliver me from all the snares of the fowlers, of the nuisance pedestals. Look, hold on, somebody. He said he will cover me with his feathers, and under his wings thou shalt trust. That means I'm in the midst of the total authority of the kingdom of God. That means that according to Isaiah 54 and 17, no weapon can be formed against me. The Bible says his truth should be my shield and my buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid in my in there by any terror by night, nor any kind of pestilence that may come in by the daytime. That means they're fired by day. That whatever disease and whatever sickness, is, I'm under the authority of the kingdom of God. He says in the sixth verse, nor should the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that weighs at noonday. The Bible says you will see your enemy fall. The Bible declared that he will show you. He will prepare you. Look, he will prepare a place for your enemy right in the midst of your face. He will let you see your enemy fall. Those who rise up against you, those who put their mouth on you, those who look at you, if you ain't got what it takes. God said, look, that thousand will fall by the wayside. And not only that, I will show you a double jeopardy of the ones who roll with them. The 10,000 will fall with them. But the Bible said, because of who you are and because you trust in me and you lean not to your own, but you acknowledge me. And it's a way that you looked at this thing as if it wasn't from a physical standpoint of view, but it was from a spiritual standpoint of view. It's a way that seemed right. God said, you threw that away and you begin to hear what the spirit has to say. What does it say? He who has an ear, let him what? Hear what the spirit of who the Lord has to say. I'm Apostle Charles Ellis here at Harvest New Night Church. We call this round one ding ding of dealing with this area a way it seems right. You guys can join me again on Saturday afternoon here at HNLC Studio, but there's more going on here at HNLC Studios with all the things we got in place here that's going on. God is study pushing the kingdom and thrusting it in an entirely different direction as we continue to move forth. And we want you guys also to catch us on our actually um I actually knew Fresh Word Station. For those who had never heard Fresh Word, you want to look at some of the things that goes on in Fresh Word. You know, we actually with our actually XM radio station, not free recording on the, actually a regular basis, but we actually pre-record our services and send them in, and they play them on XM 127, which gives us the opportunity to continue to expand the gospel throughout all the world. All the different stations, all the things that Christ has given me for this particular station and this ministry has all come through the fruition of the Holy Spirit is nothing to myself. I, I didn't look, I couldn't even, I couldn't heal a fly if it had a headache. But God began to declare things to me and how I need to put this thing together. I ain't never plugged in a plug, but God will show you things. As we begin to look at our Apple podcast, you got those available to you. You got our Podbean uh, uh, services that are taking place here right now, even as we're speaking, that's coming into fruition. We got our Spreaker station, which we own now. We got our blog talk station. We got our RC radio station. All this is coming to what the kingdom of God has declared as it continues to expand throughout all the globe. You know, all the, all the things we are doing here is just, it's just that God is enormously doing things to the point that it's not to the point that man were regulated from a natural standpoint of view. It's something going on supernatural. It's the airwaves, and we're fighting in a whole different type of fight. We're not inside the four walls fighting and dealing with the area of the members or the prisoners. We're in the airwaves, and what makes our fight so strong that the Word of God declared the decree that Satan is the second heaven authoritator. He, now see, he ain't in the third heaven, but he's in the second. See, he's been kicked out from up there, but he been lowered down to the third to the second heaven and so we fighting in his atmosphere the bible said he's a prince of the power of the air and what we're doing we're on the airways so we're fighting in the midst we're strapped with the armor of god going into fights and battles criticism things ways events circumstances situations they don't come to us physically they come to us through airways remember satan is the prince of the power of the air and we're right in the middle of the power of the fight in the air they would correct the word of God to come forth each and every day. Just knowing, declaring, the decree that God's got a plan for our life. It's not according to any kind of business structure. It's a supernatural move. And I'll advise most of you who are part of this service and know that we're doing here to work at HNLC. Look, give in to the ministry. 
It's a great work. It's a magnificent work. It can't do nothing but get better. We're in France. We're in Germany. We're in Dubai. We're in Rome. We're in Italy. We're out there even in the area of Siberia. I ain't never even heard about them people before. And they're coming in contact with Palestine, India. We're all out in the different areas, all 50 states. Wherever that is a Wi-Fi and that's airwaves moving, you will hear the word of God coming from HNLC Studios under the under the uh, rulership and under the reignship in terms of what God has given us with Pastor Patty Ellis and Pastor Charles, the well, Apostle Charles Ellis here at HNLC Ministries, and also my little daughter, Marcella Ellis, 10 years old. Got her own show called uh, Bible uh, Hour with Marcella Ellis. You hear it Sunday morning. Go to my website. Go to my website. Look what's going on there. You're never going to hear a whole lot of critiquing and all talk or performance that make you feel good. But we believe, according to the Word of God, that when you need prayer, you need someone to talk with or speak about some things that you're dealing with in your life. We got a number you can call. It's 214-778-5219. Also, you can reach me by email at harvestnlc at gmail.com. Or you can go to my website, which is harvestnewlifechurch.com. If you want to be a part of the work we're doing here at HNLC Studios, don't forget to, you know, just, just go to my actually Spreaker.com and look under Harvest New Life Church and you see all the information you need to know about the work we're doing here and give into the ministry. It's a work. Put, don't worry about what somebody else doing. Put your brick in the ministry. Help build what we're doing here. We're not trying to run for popularity. We're not trying to run for titles and positions, but we do filter the word through the Holy Spirit. It's a blessing for you guys to join me here at HNLC Studios. Don't want you to forget about the man of God, Dr. Von Peek, coming up on the 14th. Once you go to his social network, Dr. Von Peek, or just Von Peek, you know, Apostle Von Peek, on the active social network under uh, your Facebook channels. And the information of his ministry is out there in Arlington. And it's going to be 1919 South Arlington, uh, South Collins Street, excuse me, in Arlington. Texas. Now to contact him, you actually want to go to area code 817 that's 380 380-5406 and for the woman of God, Erlene Singer I pray that the woman of God, yeah, she don't throw something through the mic at me if I'm, if I'm messing her name, but I don't think she's that kind of person her, her husband seem to be great uh, honest people, and she's got the actually message conference that's coming up out of Texas Motor Speedway and more information about that you want to go to your actually Facebook channel and go under uh, a conference that we say message conference and hear what she has to say and there's a lot of great things uh, this they are doing other than just this Texas Speedway they got a lot of great things they're doing and when you're doing great work for the ministries I'm gonna spread you I'm gonna put you out there because we're in the battle together you know if they're my front runners with me on the front line and we're fighting then guess what I'm gonna be right there strapped with them and continue to fight and go forth but other than that for me and the woman of God Pastor Patty Ellis and here at Harvest New at Church and Harvest New at Studios we thank you guys for always joining us and being a part of the work we're doing here at HNLC I love to you and we continue to ask you to continue to just trust and believe and declare and decree and move forward Forward and know that God's got a plan for your life that supersedes far beyond more than you could imagine or even think of. God bless you guys. We love you.